How are we game leapers? Coach Cheeks bringing you another video and in this episode you will learn how to play Zed like the best Zed in the world. We will be covering some of the laning phase, mechanics and how this dude is able to dominate the map in the mid to late game. If you're a mid laner that struggles with laning, is looking to master the master of shadows or doesn't know what to do when the laning phase ends, then this video is a must watch. All of the tips I go over will be relatable even if you despise all those LL stylish fanboys. Remember to help a video out and leave a like, we really appreciate it. Subscribe so you you don't miss any of our daily uploads and check out gameleap.com the premier site for league of legends learning videos courses guides hundreds of them made by challenger players and coaches to help you reach your potential all right let's get into it let's start by addressing some key points about the early laning phase and my first tip well let's call it the trifecta relating to all three basic abilities Typically, most melee mid champions are weak level 1 because they can get poked for free by their ranged counterparts. Zed is no different, but even into melee champions, Zed's level 1 is very underwhelming. Into a Renekton, Zed would get out traded heavily if he went in for an auto attack brawl, so he plays the early game according to his champion's power and the power of his lane opponent. Champions that are similar in this regard are Silas, Katarina, and Fizz. Weak right off the bat, but can do some real damage with all of their basic abilities, especially if the enemy mid stuffs up. This this is why assassins in particular are banned on the reg in lower levels of play. Mistakes are made on a consistent basis and players can punish these mistakes with all in 100 to 0 champions. So if our goal is to start fighting when we have our trifecta, the three basic abilities, what do we do until then? I said just before Zed loses to Renekton heavily in a headbutt contest, so we don't want to fight the croc until we have our basic abilities. It's still hard of course, but we actually have a viable chance of out trading him with those abilities, especially if he messes up. This leads into my second tip. Healthy spikes. If Zed has a power spike at level 3, do you guys think we should hit that spike as healthy as possible? Yes. Of course. It's an obvious answer, but I've coached many Zed players who think the lane has to be won by the second minion wave. If you're going in for trades with stronger level 1 and level 2 champions, your power spike is weaker the less health you have. And if you're missing a lot of HP, it's no spike at all. Any move you try to make, even if you counter the enemy champion, will result in a death, and the lane is already over before it's really started. In hard matchups, try not to fall below 50% HP by the time you hit level 3. Now it is relative to your opponent's health, but the sake of argument, let's assume both players are the same skill level and they win or lose depending on the champions themselves. So if Zed in this game was to fall below half HP to a Renekton, Renekton can potentially one-shot Zed by flash stunning with his fury stacked and the lane becomes unwinnable. Therefore, Zed farms as safely as possible when he has to, and this means giving up CS to not get chugged. Renekton seems to int here and he does, but the idea is right, it was just poorly executed. Zed throws out his W and deals damage to Renekton with his E and Q, so Renekton knows Zed is now fighting with just basic attacks. He dashes in, and instead of stunning Zed with his Red Fury, which would deal more damage, he decides to Q. This means his W does less damage when he uses it because of his Grey Fury bar, and Zed comes very close to killing him. So yes, the Renekton's combo is bad, but the reason Zed is able to punish the Croc's mistake is because of how he's valued his HP and played towards his Trifecta. Health is more important than gold in the early game, especially when you're not running Teleport. If you have to base because you misplayed and lost a lot of HP, you could miss up to two minion ways, which is huge. Huge. This is two levels and at least 200 gold. Play safer to be stronger. Next tip is the green light. When you're playing mid lane, cooldowns determine whether you want to trade or want to back off. On champions like Zed, the enemy's cooldowns are arguably more important than yours. Each champion has a key ability in their kit that protects them. Look at this exchange. Zed's escape is his W and the lane is in an awkward position so he doesn't want to throw out his W in front of him. He wants to save it for when Renekton tries to engage. This might also bait the Renekton into overextending so Lilia can gank and potentially kill him, but Renekton backs off. Smart move. If he was to use the second dash from his E to jump onto Zed again, that he has no escape, and being so far away from his turret, aka safety, he can throw the whole lane. Let's go through some popular examples. Syndra has her E, Scatter the Weak that stuns, Diana has her W, Pale Cascade that provides a shield, and Lissandra has her W, Ring of Frost that roots. All of a sudden, when you're playing against these champions, you start to recognize your windows of opportunity because their defensive ability, if you like, is no longer available. This is your green light, your cue to all in. It's not just on Zed this applies, however. You can do this on any champion. It's just more effective on Zed, Fizz, Silas, Katarina because they have gap closers and can punish the enemy instantly. We have to know what our red light is as well, which is just as important. And the question to be answered is when do I not go in? Let's answer this as if it's just a 1v1. 
Now, yes, there are junglers that can impact mid and support and so on, but let's focus on the 1v1 because that is what mid lane will be for most of the game. So you want to be aggressive when the enemy champion has used their important ability, so you want to be passive when the enemy champion still has that important ability. You can still trade, of course. For example, as Zed, you might throw out your W-E-Q combo, but you're not looking to all in unless there's some real kill throw there. Maybe you chunk them with your trifecta, your three basic abilities, that you can then auto-attack them and ignite to kill them. Or maybe they missed their important ability while you were trying to damage them and now you can chase them down without any ramifications. I'm going to talk about one mechanic Z99 uses often and it's sick to watch and learn even if you don't play Z so check this out. The untouchable combo. Zed's ultimate is a massive power spike, but there is counterplay. I know some of you are saying, what? No, there's not. There is, man. There is trust. Zed can't return to his R shadow for half a second, which sounds fast, but it really isn't. This used to be instant. So when Zed ults a champion, he will end up behind them and cannot reposition. But here's why this Zed player is the nuts. He creates situations where he can reposition immediately. You can do so with your flash, but also with your W living shadow. If you throw your W out and then R an enemy, you can press W as soon as your ult animation ends to blink to your W shadow. This makes it almost impossible for counterplay because you literally cannot be touched. You are Neo from the Matrix. Not only does this look pretty hectic and you might show your friends what you did, it gives you the chance to land three Razor Shurikens, your Qs. You may have heard of the triple Shuriken combo and that's something we'll say for another video, but it deals the most amount of damage. This is because there's three of you throwing your Q, your character and your W and R shadows pop. Now, he leaves lane with a two kill advantage at this stage, so yes, it's an advantage, but the game is still very much in the balance. And this is my final tip for the mid and late game, the big fish. Let's see if you guys can work out what I mean. What should we place emphasis on as Zed in this game? And I'll give you three options. Keep in mind that it's just before 20 minutes. Number one, we match Renekton in the side lane and try kill him and or farm. Number two, we play top lane to be closer to Baron and try to kill Darius who's going alright, or... Number three, we hunt down Ophelios. You can make an argument for choosing any of the three choices. Matching Renekton probably means you have a better chance of increasing your kill tally because you're stronger. If he doesn't fight you, then you farm for free. But does it mean anything if we kill Renekton again? If Zed and Alistair, we can see him on the map supporting Zed, were to kill Renekton, what does it mean? They might be able to get the tier 2 bot tower, but in mid lane they are outnumbered. So they might decide to roam mid after killing Renekton, but what happens if the enemy team backs off? Nothing much. So what I'm saying here guys is that some kills are more consequential than others, and killing Renekton has very little impact. Funny thing is they don't kill him and he almost 1v2s. He's going to fall off anyway and means little compared to the other champions on his team. For that reason I wouldn't recommend the first option. The second option, playing top lane so you are closer to Baron is the most correct, theory wise, out of the three. Once towers start falling and Baron spawns, your bot lane should be mid and your mid and top laners go to the side lanes. Zed doesn't have teleport, so he should fill the lane closer to the primary objective, in this case it's Baron, so he would go top. Darius is also playing top lane and killing him means a lot more than killing Renekton. You could argue he's the biggest threat on the enemy team right now, but I still think there's a bigger fish to fry. And that's option number three. Aphelios. The later a game goes, the more valuable AD carries become. As a result, if you can kill them over and over again, you delay their 2-3 to three item power spike and give your team a bigger window to win the game. At this stage in the game, Zed is online. He doesn't need a power farm for items and damage, he already has it. So using it is one thing, using it on the right enemy champion is another. So in your games, ask yourself who's the biggest fish on the enemy team? By killing them and taking them off the map, your team has opportunities to take objectives. Towers, barons, elders, and these ultimately lead to winning and losing. Anyone can kill the small fish. Go get the marlin, brah. I want to break this fight down because it demonstrates what can happen when you use your abilities on the right targets and not on the champions that mean nothing. At this stage, Aphelios has an infinity edge and a cloak of agility. Nothing to write home about, so he isn't the be-all and end-all just yet. If he was super fed, Zed would have to play this fight differently, perhaps flanking through the bottom tri-brush or Wing over the dragon wall to use his ultimate on Aphelios. Watch closely. Zed doesn't just throw his combo out of Renekton because he can, he holds it and waits to unleash on Karthus or Aphelios. Karthus is relatively close to him so he chunks the enemy jungler. He waits for the Lilia sleep to set in and Renekton to move away from Karthus before he W's to his shadow and executes him. He then ults Time Kench immediately so he can create space from the dead Karthus and the Cloud Drake and R's back as soon as he can to avoid Renekton and Darius. The rest is a formality and he picks up a quadra kill. So what were the key points of this video? The trifecta, three basic abilities, play for them. The green light, being aggressive when the enemy uses their defense. The red light, 
being passive when the enemy still has their defense, the untouchable mechanic, using your W shadow with your ultimate, and the big fish, would you rather catch a marlin or a prawn? Apply these tips in your games fam and I know for a fact that you will climb the ranks and conquer the mid lane. If you're loving this content at the moment it doesn't have to stop, head on over to GameLeap.com to keep learning the ins and outs of Summoner's Rift. If you want to be the best then sussing out our hundreds of videos, courses and guides is a no brainer. Please like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe for the next daily upload. This has been Coach Eags, until next time, peace.